Welcome to being there. And now that you're here, we're going to share our insights into exploring our worlds of music, poker, and life. I'm a professional poker player, personal coach, and television commentator for the Heartland Poker Tour. My name's Kenna James. Thanks for joining us. Hey guys, I'm Blake Ian, a musician, meditator, serial entrepreneur, and novice poker player. So I'm going to reveal a very special technique that I use when I play poker. For those people that play poker out there, I think it's really powerful because it's kind of simple. Uh, and if you can be mindful of it, definitely will, you know, transform your game. So think of it as a four point system. All right. So when you're in a hand of poker, there's four major aspects to the hand. You ready? Mm -hmm. Here they are. And now let's say we're playing a tournament. Chips are primary. So if you have your opponent out chipped, that's one point. Okay. If, you, if you have uh, a hand range advantage, you know, um, let's say your opponent's playing any ace and you've got like ace 10 in this particular situation, you have a hand range advantage. Yeah. So you so say your hand range advantage as far as my range is higher than yours? My hand is higher than your range. So oh, let's my say hand is example, higher than your range. Okay. Yeah. Let's say, let's say, let's say you're in the small blind and I'm raising 30% of hands from the button, which is any ace, any pair, any Broadway suited connectors, five or above. That's 30%, right? Okay. And, but you have a hand like ace jack. So you have a range advantage. That particular hand versus my range is got a higher equity value. Got it. So you have That's hand range two. advantage. Point number two. Okay. Third is position, table positional advantage. So like in this example, I said, I'm on the button with 30%. You're in the small blind, but I have table position. Right? Okay. So that. Whoever's last to act in the hand, that's point three. Okay. And then the fourth point is the betting advantage. Whoever has the last aggressive action has uh, a significant advantage. So if I raise and you just call, I have the advantage. If I raise and you three bet and I call, you have the advantage in the betting. That you are said to have the lead going into the next betting round. Okay. So those are the four points? So the four and points are... Are they, are they in order as far as priority? Yes, kind of, but it depends on what game you're playing, if you're playing cash or tournament. You know, okay. chips are more important in tournaments, mm -hmm. whereas a hand, your hand value or your hand advantage is more important in a cash game. So, uh, but so I would say they are chips, table position, hand, and betting. So think of those four. So now let's say we're in a hand. And like I said, I raise on the button, right? And I have more chips than you do. Mm -hmm. And you have a hand like ace eight suited and you really want to play. So you've got every so you, point against me, basically. So you decide to call. You got it. If you just call there, I've got, I've got, table position, I've got chips, I've got the betting lead, and hand range advantage might be about nil in that spot. So it's three to zero right. to one. So you haven't set yourself up for success. So you want to set yourself up for success in which that you have an advantage of maybe three out of four of those. Or if you can get four out of four, that's great. So sometimes you get in these spots where the hand range is really close folks you know it's no so really what swings it is the betting lead you know or the table position or the amount of chips so if you can focus and think of those four areas of the game when you're deciding whether or not to play a hand you know obviously when you have nothing you don't play or when you have a great hand you're going to play but you know a lot of times when you have king queen ace jack ace 10 ace nine suited two sixes all these kind of hands you're wondering should i really get involved here uh, right. then you can go to this point system and, and really kind of evaluate the value of your situation a little bit clearer and a little bit more quickly. And so you set yourself up going in, you know, pre-flop, like, you know, should I take the lead? Should I take the betting lead here or not? Well, if I don't, I'm going to be at a one to three disadvantage already throughout this hand and a 
you right. know, and I probably should just, you know, rather than press or try and chase, just go ahead and get out. Yeah, um, no, it makes a lot of sense. So things I can check or not check, uh, I can look into uh, for uh, assess when I'm playing a hand. Like I pick up exactly. two eights, but you're, you, are, you, you have better position, you have twice as many chips, uh, and you, let's say you're playing a pretty tight range. And, and I, I'm and gonna I, fold, well, I'm, right? I mean, well, well, but no. If you, I'm saying, if you've raised, depends, it depends. if you've raised. Well, if I raise, then you got, yeah. But you know, well, that situation is a little different because it depends on how many chips you actually do have. This is, is not going to cover all situations because you might just flat there for set value as long as you have enough chips, right? Right. So uh, there's other but then, factors. But then, like, so well, other, it's not it's not only pre flop too, obviously, right? You can apply these to correct to every street. You, you right? can apply right. It's just. It's just the four main factors. There's there's other factors in a hand, like the playability of your hand. Like pairs, the small pairs tend to play really easily, so you can take more of a disadvantage. Like when you're going for set and that, you know, I'm going to try and flop a set or get out. I got to tell you why I'm laughing. <laughs> I really wanted to do this joke to fuck you up right now, but I couldn't yeah. do it because this made me laugh too hard. <laughs> I was going to go, all right. Hey, hey, guys, this is what we do. By the way, this is how we do it. And spiritually, this is what happens when you, when you, get, you get charged and just laugh hysterically. But that's what this show is. It's not just all fun and games. It's a lot of serious talk. Thanks for joining us. We're going to step away for just a minute. Hey, let's spin this record and listen to some music while I go get a slice of peeps and a beer, eh? It's going to be a Sunday.
<laughs> Enjoy these few spinners. The thing is going to spin it up. <laughs> oh, if I look a little red right now, it's I, I just had a coughing fit. Uh, we were off the air for a second, uh, but we're back. Thanks for hanging with us. Um, let's continue. So, okay, so better example, I have ace nine and you have me in position and you make a bet and you have twice as many chips. Really no reason for me to play that hand. You got it, but let's say it's... But I, if I had double you, chips and you and you were earlier than me betting and I had twice as many chips as you, that changes everything, right? Because now I've got yeah, position now, on you, I've now, got chip position. Yeah, now instead of, and now instead of flatting, you're going to three bet with your ace nine. So now you have really? table position, you have chip position. Now you have betting position. So you're trying to gain an advantage in every position. You see? Yeah. Uh, um, so, so now you, you, because in that situation, he raised, let's say he raised, yeah, but he raised in middle position and you, you're after him with ace nine, you got twice as many chips. So now you have well, table position. Uh, yeah. Hand range is about, is about nil or maybe you're at a little disadvantage, but you got a three to one advantage. You can easily take less of a hand. Matter of fact, you could have eight, five suited in that spot. And you're ahead of and three, three of the four areas. And three bet? Yeah, for sure. Just to yeah. give yourself an extra point of those. So that's really Correct. interesting because to me, everything else you said, I understand. But the, the um, taking that advantage, I guess what it is is like, the other advantages, the other points, I guess, are um, seem like a choice where, I mean, excuse me, seem like not a choice. They seem to have given to me. Like at that point, I have double your chips or I have half your chips. That's just a definite. It's nothing, nothing I'm doing at that moment in that hand. Uh, table position, same thing. Um, you know, hand range, right. kind of the same thing. But with that taking the advantage, that's like, I'm going to buy, I'm basically buying that point out of the four points, right? So I'm you're putting money that, in you're buying and purchasing that, that point. So that's, that's interesting because it, it wouldn't seem, you know, it doesn't seem uh, intuitive for me to do that, but obviously I, I always trust your That's point. right, which is why poker, uh, the advantage goes to the aggressor, right? So for example, let's say you do have somewhat of a hand, ace 10, and I three bet you with eight five, and I'm ahead of three of the four areas. See, you still have to kind of hit your hand because let's say it comes king jack four. You check. I bet my positional advantage. What are you going to do with your ace ten? Right. You see. Well, right. You know, yeah. or it comes queen ten three. You check. I bet you call. I could. Pre I just. I got. It's like right. it's like a tennis match. I'm working you around the court. You know what I mean? Right. You're you're you're. Um... You're playing offense, not defense. Correct. And that's and that's twenty five percent of those key one of those key four factors. A lot of people just default into playing passively, check calling, trying to make hands, trying to see flops and and, and well, I told someone oh, they uh, give up that edge. I told a buddy of mine about you and about some of the work we've done together on my uh, poker game. And I told him, you know, we're talking about adjustments in life, you know, and we always talk about obviously how Poker and life are very, uh, you know, sort of microcosm. Poker is a microcosm for life. So right. um, it, it came up and I said, you know, it's funny. Sometimes you just make these adjustments and things just, you know, really, they have this serious effect, this serious result. And I told him the story yeah. when I was in Puerto Rico with my family. And I, you called me just randomly and I said, yo, I'm going to go play a poker tournament tonight at the casino. Just give me, you know, give me a, a nugget of advice. And you said, um, you're not allowed to call tonight at all for this whole tournament. You sort of tie. It reminded me of Rocky where he ties his, you know, ties his left arm and, yeah. or ties his right arm, you know, and so makes some switch. And uh, he ju you just took away call. You said, you're not, you're not going to make one call. You're going to fold, bet, or raise. Those are your only moves for the whole tournament. Just do it as an exercise. I took the tournament down that night and I didn't make one wow. call. And it was <laughs> like, you know, it was like 45, 50 people. And I went in there and I won the tournament. And like, you know, it was obviously a lot of factors and I was fortunate in card stuff, but I mean, it was, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty awesome, you know, because it was that one adjustment that changed things. Um, cool. and was, we've spoken recently about adjustments too. um, making small adjustments, you know, kind of closing certain doors and other ones open and, you know, leaving space for 
uh, for the right things to come in means, you know, sort of closing spaces that don't serve you. And um, yeah, yeah. we've both been going through that in a lot of different ways in the last few years. And so we've, we've kind of related on that point. And uh, it reminds me of a poker game, you know, it reminds me of poker philosophy because of those adjustments, you know, and, and uh, if you're just playing any two cards, you're sort of, you know, you're not like really. Well, yeah, that would be like me just going on the keyboard and just pounding notes, right? It's just right. like, you know. Like you might get lucky, right? Like a monkey yeah. might pound on the keyboard and write some good melody at some point, <laughs> right? If you do that with a billion, you know, but like, yeah. you know, it's not, uh, it's certainly not the most no, efficient or effective way for results. No, quality is about rejection. You know what I mean? And, and right. if you if you throw enough hands away and you have the discipline and patience to do that, the ones you're going to play are going to be naturally of higher value. You know, yeah. it's kind of like uh, you probably have a thousand more songs you haven't released, right? And then yeah. the ones you really cultivate and worked on are of that much higher quality because you've selected, you know. I'd say, I'd say there's five to ten songs per song that i release yeah wow that's interesting you know what that you know what's interesting about that is that means you're selecting about 20 percent or less of the songs that you compose or work on and that's exactly what it's in poker yeah, about 10 to 20, you know in a nine hand and ten handed poker about 10 to 20 percent of hands you know that we play that's awesome uh because you know the rest is a lot of there's a lot of junk you know yeah. And then there's the premium hands, which are obvious, are always money winners. But really what makes the difference between the winners and losers is how they play the middle ground, how they play, you know, when they're not definitely in front and they're not sure they're behind. They're kind of, I'm in front of some hands, but behind others, you know. And that's where you got to kind of think of these four factors. And the other fifth factor, which I didn't talk about, there's many factors, but without getting to it, is the playability. Like how easy does this hand play, you know? Is it a hand that can make easily second best? Is it a hand that I can get in trouble with, you know? And uh, so anyway, think about those points when you play again uh, before you take your action and, yeah. and, and, and count the points before you take your action and say, and it'll think, wait a minute, you know? Just by taking this one little action, I can get a three to one advantage. Or if I just call here, I'm going to be at a one to three disadvantage. I might as well just, you know, wait for a right. better spot. Well, we stepped away from one in a couple of minutes. It's been a couple of days, uh, but we're back live, live to tape, obviously. Uh, is Blake want to go off and try this system out to see if it really worked? What are you laughing about, my friend? You said we're back live, and then you're like, well, actually, we're not live. <laughs> well, we're live to tape. Right, my bad. <laughs> I mean, otherwise, we, I guess we'd be dead, right? Which is why we have the spiritual part of the show. Blake actually believes we are all dead. Uh, you know, nobody's really alive. It's all uh, the Matrix. But that's another show. On this show, we're talking poker, this episode, I guess, not this show. Uh, what's been happening out there on the felt, my friend? Well, I've, uh, I've put your four-point uh, system to, to the test and, and, and uh, brought it into my game. And the results, I have to say, are uh, pretty miraculous. Pretty, as, as promised, really? transforming of the game for me. Um, not only in the results, but in the way that I see the game. I mean, I can't tell you this probably, and you've given me a lot of poker tips over the years, a lot of coaching sessions. Um, there's never, I've never received any advice or system like this that has uh, had a greater effect on my game and the ability to see what's going on during the hand. Um, it's just opened up a grid, you know? And um, I experienced that with guitar, you know, all of a sudden you just see more, you're just at a newer level. Um, and chess, you kind of get that. And I really experienced that in the past week with poker uh, from, from your system. I mean, just everything became a lot clearer. I got a lot of clarity in the game. So just to remind people those points of uh, position that you explained to me uh, in, a, in a four point system of being, um, and I'll recite them just to test me to see if I know them. Okay, correctly. good, yeah. I remember them correctly. Obviously these are Kenneth's yeah. points. Um, one, table position. Uh, two, uh, chip position. Uh, three, hand range position, meaning if I feel like I'm playing a, at a tighter range than the, other, than the opponent. 
and um, betting position, which would be me taking the lead uh, on the betting. Is that, is that correct? Do I have that right? In general, you have it correct. A couple of corrections, meaning a hand advantage. Do you have an advantage, meaning does your, is your hand have ahead of your opponent's range? What does that mean? That means that if he's, he's playing this range and then you plug in your hand, you can use a, a software program for that. Uh, I use Poker Cruncher, for example. And you can see your equity, what the value of that hand is worth versus his range. For right. example, let's say a guy's playing uh, aces and you have seven deuce. You might have 9% equity, which means if you run all five cards out, you're going to win 9% of the time. You know, right. you don't have an advantage or an extreme disadvantage, right? So is but, it, it's interesting because this is one of my questions uh, that, you, that you dove right into is, you know, the way you, I, I had interpreted it uh, when we spoke last time is that it's my hand that obviously I, it's not a range because I know what hand I'm holding. Let's say I'm holding ace-king, right? Versus the range or the frequency that I could, you know, based on the frequency, the range that I could guess the opponent's playing and I want to put my hand against their range. One of my questions was, Let's say this guy just sat down uh, and I don't have a read on their range. Is it then just the likelihood that my hand beats you know, most hands? Like if I'm holding ace king or aces, do I automatically give myself that point if I'm holding aces, basically? Uh, what you give it yourself is you have a, what's called a baseline or default range that you would give just an unknown opponent raising from that position. For example, if they're raising an early position, we give them a 10% range, in middle position, 20%, and around back, 30%. And then you would compare your hand to that range. As such, let me show you here. So this simulation has run that hand versus this range 6.7 million times. Wow. And you're going to come out ahead, again, if all five cards are seen, 63% of the time versus 36. So this gives the difference between your equity and his equity is what's called your edge. So you can see you have almost a 30% edge here. You see? So that, that's where I would award myself that point. That's correct. I'm ahead of his range. But let's say you have a hand like um, Jack 8 suited, uh, and he's playing that 30% range. You see, he's a 60-40. People like Jack H. suited, but you're actually a 20% dog. He has a 20% edge on you. So as far as hand, you're behind his range. Got it. So, that, this, is, so this is a, an app. Later when we get into some more poker discussions, I'll teach you how to use this and how to determine what kind of advantage you have. Got it. Your hand has versus a range. So two, two questions I'm going to ask at the same time in case they're related, but if they're not related answers, uh, we can split them up. But uh, one is, um, does this, this four-point system work on all streets, or is this just a pre-flop uh, strategy? And the, uh, the second question is, um, what about the players behind you who haven't acted yet? How do you take that into consideration in this point system? Is it just the people who have acted already? Oh, great questions. All right, let me take them in reverse order. Uh, what about the players that are left to act? Well, yes, that's another factor. It's not, it's not plugged into this system. But, yeah, you know, do I look to my left and think, you know, are they going to play or not? But that's kind of like uh, seeing a road that you're not on yet, meaning all decisions are made in new units of time or in the time that you're making them. A lot of people get tripped up because, well, what if he does this? Or what if this person does this behind me? Or what if he has a hand? And they're worried about what's going to happen in the future, and it affects their present time decision. So we give it some consideration uh, generally, but not to where it overly affects our present time decision. For example. I think a lot of people would be surprised to learn. I'm surprised to hear that. Um, obviously, you know, I, I trust and, and, and believe what you're saying. It's surprising because in games like chess, you know, the whole thing is about seeing 12 moves ahead, you know, how many moves ahead you could look at uh, right. for advantage. But it's interesting that in poker, you want to really stay in the present and not go too far into the future of what could happen. 
Yeah, not not really more than one street ahead uh, because you get too far in front and too many, there's so many millions of computations that come up. Yeah. I mean, the basic concept of poker is you play very few hands up front, a few more in the middle, and most of your hands around back. Right. So those concepts are built into that right. question already. Right. Uh, now, your other question about is this, can you use this throughout the play of the hand? Of course, but it's more set up to use of whether or not to get engaged in a hand in the first place. Right. That's how it felt. It felt like a yeah. pre-flop. I started to realize when I put it into practice, I was like, oh, you know, this seems like it makes a ton of sense pre-flop, but as we went down to flop and all these other streets, I was a little thinking, you know, I was a little confused as to whether I should be using it. Right. Because it was, there's, there were a lot more factors. Right. right? Well, I have another one that I'm going to give you called PFHS, which is pre, pre-flop hand summary, a system that I designed for summarizing the action of the importance of the action pre-flop. So when you're post-flop, you're mentally clear on what to do. So I'll share that in another episode. All right, Kenna, that was another great show. Uh, thanks, thanks for having this uh, set up, and um, thanks, everybody, for joining us. I'm Blake Ian. And I'm Kenna James. Join us next time as we continue to explore music, poker, and life. Thanks, everyone, for being there. Been a long time. Yeah, it's been a long road. And I'm putting my